Hi guys, in this video we will be understanding the causes of aridity in hot desert environments and answering an exam style question. In this video we're going to be looking at the four main types of causes of aridity. The first being atmospheric circulation, then continentality, then relief and cold ocean currents and we're going to look at these four in greater detail. One of the main reasons why deserts are present and the reason why they form is because of global atmospheric circulation. And this is because the air in our atmosphere travels in cells, which are loops. And this is due to where we have heat and where the air cools. So as we might know, air rises when it's hot and when it cools, it sinks. And this is really important to remember. So if we're looking at this diagram here, the red arrows are representative of the hot rising air and the blue arrows represent the cool sinking air. So deserts form at 30 degrees north and south of the equator. So at this point here, and these are areas of high pressure. So that's one really important fact to remember is deserts form in high pressure areas. And this is because the air is sinking. So you need to remember that the air is sinking and sinking air creates high pressure. At the equator where we have the air rising, this is an area of low pressure. So sinking, high pressure, rising, low pressure. And the air is rising at the equator because this is the intertropical convergence zone. And this is where we're getting the greatest concentration of sunlight. So if I draw a little sun here, the sun's rays are shining most concentratedly on the equator. So the air is heating up here and it's rising. And above the equator, lots and lots of clouds are going to form and it's going to rain a lot. So... That's what's happening at the equator. Now it's going to stop raining and the air is going to rise up even more. And once it stops raining, the air is going to be really, really dry because it's lost all its moisture in the rain at the equator. So by the time the air reaches 30 degrees north and south of the equator, it's going to be really, really dry. So that's really important. And that is why deserts are so dry and they have very little rainfall. It's because all the moisture has been let go over the equator. So by the time it reaches the deserts, there is no rain and little moisture. So that is how deserts are formed due to atmospheric circulation. And just show you on a bigger world map, the deserts are forming at these lines here on either side of the Hadley cells. So it's really important to remember Hadley cells. And this is our equator here. So our air is rising and falling on either side of the equator. And as you can see here, the end of the Hadley cell is right in line with the Sahara Desert, so which is in North Africa. So this just really shows you that this is a really main cause of desert formation. Our next cause is called continentality. And this essentially means that areas that are inland are going to be drier than areas by the coast. And I'm going to explain this in a bit more detail using this diagram. So if we have the sea and we have our coastal area over here, the sun is going to heat up the water through insulation, which is solar energy. And the water heats up slowly. And we also get high levels of evaporation of water evaporating from the surface of the sea. And this is going to cause a lot of coastal areas to receive a lot of rain, represented by this cloud here. However, by the time these winds in this cloud move inland, there's no more water left because it's been raining by the coast. So we don't get any clouds over in this section, which represents the interior of the land, as opposed to the coastal area. And when we have no clouds, we are going to have more sunshine reaching the floor of the earth. So we get hotter environments inside a continent rather than at the coast. So that is the process of continentality. Our third cause is relief. And this relates to the altitude or the height of the land. And this happens because where we get mountains in coastal areas, the wind that's coming off the sea is going to absorb 
or contain a lot of moisture because the oceans are evaporating so this moisture is within the winds. But when these winds rise they cool and when air cools it can't hold as much moisture in it and that's why it rains. So on this side of the mountain we're going to get a lot of rain and as you see here we've got a lot of vegetation. However, when this air then comes down on the other side of the mountain, it's lost all its moisture because it's been raining on the other side. And on this side, we are going to get very little rain and it's going to have more desert-like conditions. And an example of this is the Atacama Desert in South America, which lies on the other side of the Andes. And the Andes is a long mountain range that stretches the western coast of South America. And the Atacama is on this side of the mountain so it's very dry and has very little rainfall. And this is also called the rain shadow effect. Our last cause of deserts is due to cold ocean currents. And looking at this diagram here, we can see these red arrows represent warm ocean currents and the darker blue arrows represent cold ocean currents. So some areas of the Earth's oceans are colder than others. And this has an effect on the formation of deserts. So we get deserts where we have cold ocean currents. So we're going to use the example of the Atacama Desert, which is in the western side of South America, where we have this cold current, as you can see here. So the formation of deserts from cold ocean currents. This happens because the wind that's passing over the cold ocean cools as it passes over it and this causes the humidity to increase so any moisture water vapor that was in the wind or air is caused to condense because as we learned before as air cools it can no longer hold the moisture within it so it condenses and this condensation forms rain or fog in coastal areas as these winds move over the cold oceans and move inland. So we get fog and mist created offshore. And when the sun comes up during the day, the sun burns away this fog and mist, which is offshore. And this means that the remainder of the air is very cool and it can't hold much moisture. So as it moves inland, we don't get very much precipitation at all because all of the moisture has been lost from the air because it's so cold. And this is why we get very little precipitation over deserts, which occur near cold ocean currents, less than 250 millimetres. To show you on the map, so we've got our cold ocean current here next to South America. The wind that's travelling across here, represented by this grey arrow here, is going to cool as it moves over the cool ocean. It's going to not be able to hold as much moisture. So when it reaches the land, it's not going to be holding any moisture at all and therefore making it unable to rain over the land. So now we're going to answer an exam style question in relation to the climate of deserts. So the question asks, using the figure below, compare the temperature variations for the Sahara Desert and the Sonoran Desert for six marks. So these are our two figures here. This is the top one for the Sahara between 1955 and 2010 and showing the temperatures through these years and the same for the Sonoran Desert through the same years. So now we're going to answer this question and analyse these different graphs. So in my first paragraph, I'm going to talk about the differences in temperatures because that's what this graph is measuring. It's measuring temperatures over time for the two different deserts. So firstly, I'm going to comment on the Sahara temperatures. So I've said that the Sahara temperatures have a range of 25.2 to about 27.3 over this period compared to between 23 and 25.6 over the same period for the Sonoran Desert. So that's the first observation I've made. So I've said temperatures are largely higher in the Sahara with a range from around 25.2 to 27.3 degrees Celsius compared to 23 to 25.6 in the Sonoran. The range is higher in the Sonoran compared to the Sahara. So here I have talked about the difference between these two black bands and as you can see in the Sonoran the difference is greater than in the Sahara 
which is much smaller. So I've said the range is higher in the Sonoran compared to the Sahara, with average temperatures varying more substantially year on year than in the Sonoran. And now in the next part of my answer, I'm going on to talk about this stepped profile that we can see both the graphs show. So I've said both deserts are experiencing a gradual stepped increase in temperatures. So stepped is a good word to use to describe the shape of the graph with both experiencing step change at a similar change and by similar increases in temperature. So as we can see, these steps are going up by roughly the same amount. So I've commented on that. There are no signs of stabilization with both showing continued variation and a general upward trajectory. So I've commented that both these steps are going upwards and there is no sign of stabilizations, which means flattening off. They both seem to be both increasing at the same rate over time and this shows no sign of stopping. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.